Guys, we are so excited. We have been waiting months to tell you about this. It's something we actually started almost a year ago. And today, I get an email with all of the pages fully illustrated for the children's book we wrote. Back at the beginning of quarantine, we actually wrote a children's book. And it was something that Pete and I were really inspired to write because we started reading children's books to Lacey. And honestly, there's like a lot of not so great children's books out there, no offense. Uh, but we just felt like there was a lot of them that didn't have message or just kind of fell flat. And so we were just inspired to do it for ourselves. We felt like there needed to be some messages that we wanted to share with Lacey about mindfulness and uh, gratitude and being in the moment. And so we were inspired to write a book. So back at the beginning of quarantine, Pete and I sat down one morning and in like 40 minutes, we just wrote an entire book. It was really inspired and we were just in the flow and we were back and forth and we just wrote the whole thing together and we were really excited about it. And that book was called Above the Clouds. And so we shared it with some friends and family, got some great feedback and decided we really wanted to do something with this. So we looked into what those next steps were and we were on. Here you go. Once we decided that we were all in on writing this book, we needed to learn how to self-publish because we thought that's the route we wanted to take. It turns out we have an old networking friend that we know has self-published over 10 children's books and he has a course on Udemy. And so we decided to take his course to make sure that this is something that we actually wanted to do and could do. And this is actually something we enjoy doing anytime we want to try something new is we like to look up a course online, uh, learn all about it, and then decide if uh, you know it's something we want to go ahead and pursue and uh, give it a try. So in the course we learned, we can self-publish directly through Amazon through their KDP Kindle Direct Publishing program. And it's actually a print-on-demand service, so there's no upfront cost, and they can ship it directly. You just use their entire infrastructure to ship directly to your customers, which is an awesome thing to have when you're starting out self-publishing. I think down the road, we're probably going to want to get a higher quality book or maybe do a hardcover or maybe board books because children of this age uh, will shred through <laughs> will shred through a paper book. But I think what we're going to do first to get the minimum viable product is to upload to KDP, see how that process works, see what the quality is, and then make a decision to down the road possibly do a Kickstarter. So our book is all about how no matter what, the sun is always shining above the clouds. That's why it's called Above the Clouds. And basically throughout the story, the parent and child go through all these situations where things don't work out quite how they planned because weather interferes, but they end up making the most of that situation and remembering that no matter what happens, that sun is always shining above the clouds. And the phrase that we repeat throughout the story, it's a, it's a rhyming story, and the phrase that we repeat throughout the story is, above every cloudy day is a sunny sky so blue where you'll always have me and I'll always have you. We are so excited about the story and once we decided that we were going to do this ourselves and do the whole self-publishing process and really bring this book to life, we needed an illustrator. And so we reached out on the internet, we found a few illustrators on Fiverr and we found one that reached back out to us and was excited to work with us and so we sent our book over to her and then she came back with some ideas of different characters and how they would look throughout the story and so we first decided on the character that we liked after taking some votes from family and friends. So I want to interject real quick and let you know why we chose the characters that we chose. Number one, we wanted to make sure that these characters were inclusive, no matter your background or family or where you're from. And number two, we wanted to keep the focus on the story message, which is mindfulness and perspective. And then she gave us our first spread. And guys, the first spread was awesome. Like this is the first time that we really had a creative project where we handed off a big part of this process uh, to somebody else, not only to someone else, but somebody we don't even know uh, that we can't even talk to in person. And so we handed it off, we weren't sure what to expect. And she came back with such an amazing creative interpretation of our story and had really cool ideas of her own. And it just felt like the book came to life in a whole new way. And so we were really excited. So the next steps were to have her keep uh, moving through the pages and give us more uh, pages of the book to look through and really put the whole book together. And everything came to a screeching halt. Like nothing, absolutely nothing. And then we'd message her and we found out she had some computer trouble and she'd get back to us and say like, you'll see stuff soon. 
still nothing. Like four months went by and we haven't heard anything from her, absolutely anything. I kept messaging her saying like, are we even doing this project? Should we look for someone else? I didn't even know what to do at this point because she had such a great creative vision that we didn't want to abandon that and start the process all over. And so we just felt like the project was kind of dead in the water, which is why we haven't talked about it. We didn't really know what to do. And then this morning, she sends me an email with all of the pages of our book drafted. All of them drafted, like beautiful illustrations. They look so awesome. We're really excited. And she said it should be just a couple weeks for her to finalize everything for us so that we can actually get all the pages we need and maybe even do a test print for ourselves. So the project is back on. I'm really excited. Can't wait to share more with you. I'm sure uh, as we move through the next steps of this process, you'll be hearing more about it. But Lacey's about to get up from her nap soon and we are going to do a little uh, gingerbread house project. So let's see how this goes. Actually, before Lacey wakes up from her nap, I have some errands to run and I'm taking you with me. So let's go. I almost forgot. We have made a ton of progress in the basement. Like this week, we got so much done. Day one of drywall is done. As you can see, we got this entire wall finished, put up six feet of a metal wall. We got all behind the furnace all done as well. So now I have to put up all the metal studs and put in the insulation for this big wall here before I go ahead and move down to this wall back there. So I'll be up late tonight trying to get these studs finished and then I will put the insulation in probably tomorrow, and then tomorrow I'll get going on putting in the railing uh, stud system for that side. So we got these metal studs. They're pretty cool. They're easy to put up for the most part, as long as you have the right drill bit. But we got these PVC universal snap-in bushings for the electrical wires that are going in the wall, and they should fit, right? Because they're universal. However, the shape here is not remotely the same. You see the shape as a circle. So now I have to go and cut custom circles into all these studs, which is not really what I wanted to do, but I guess I have to. And now to keep that project moving, I'm headed to Home Depot and we're gonna pick up some supplies that we need for the next steps of this project. So it's clearly, uh much more wintry outside. We finally got our first big amount of snow, which was actually all right because we had nothing else to do. It was on Saturday and it actually worked out perfectly that it snowed because it was exactly what we needed for the video we were filming for the song that we wrote. We are at Home Depot. I'm gonna go in. I've got a couple things to get here. I'm gonna get some all-purpose joint compound, some paper corner beams, if I think those will fit in the car. I'm gonna get drywall pan, tin snips, and some seam tape for the drywall. And I have a couple things to return from previous trips that we did not need. So we're gonna go in and get that so that we can uh, keep moving on this basement project. I just got back from Home Depot. The trip was a success. I got everything on the list and now I'm headed inside and hopefully it's gingerbread house time. It's time to build a house. Here are the instructions for our house. It's important to knead the frosting for at least two minutes. So here I am. I need to do this. Dad jokes. <laughs> Mama's holding down the fort, quite literally. Holding up the fort, probably more accurate. Yeah, because we had a sunroof situation going on over here. Yeah, we had a faulty roof. Gravity versus decorations.
Well, our first gingerbread house making experience was mostly a success. I hope you guys had fun with us today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you guys next week. Say bye-bye. <laughs>